let us all that we can to build a better future. This is an update to a story I covered about a week and a half ago, give or take. You'll, you know, if you go back and Bill you know what, Blasio. go, go hmm. back and look through all of our live streams and you will find it, I, I promise. Uh, this is about uh, what happened in New York and how the police were just utterly out of control, like a gang would maybe be an apt way of putting it. Uh, beating up peaceful protesters, singling out tar targeting journalists, observers, lawyers who are there to report on the legality of things, firing in crowds, running people over after pretending that they were surrounded after they drove in. To s it's like, you know, if I walk, if I see a group of uh, uh, people I don't like and uh, I just walk into the middle, I don't then get to say, I'm surrounded, help, I don't know how this happened, please, I don't know what to do. That's what this is about. So... The New York Civil Liberties Union and Legal Aid Society are suing Mayor Bill de Blasio and the NYPD brass, charging they are responsible for, quote, indiscriminate brutalization, brutalizing of peaceful protesters during, the, uh, during a wave of demonstrations that swept the city earlier this year. The police response to the protests was brutal, and the wanton display of brute force against people who are out there protesting nonviolently was shocking. The uh, NYCLU executive director, Donna Lieberman, said in an interview, it was harmful and it was traumatic and it was unlawful. And if I remember correctly, we did a couple stories where they just were like, oh, yeah, you're a, you're a journalist. No, we're going to specifically like mace you. We're going to specifically arrest you. Oh, you're a legal anal uh, aid. Well, I can't think of a better way to get these people all fired up to sue you. Uh, when you get the people with money, which I thought the New York, I thought all police knew not to touch the money, but oh well. Eleven plaintiffs named uh, in the complaints uh, say that while participating in the protest between May 28th and June 28th, they were beaten with batons, hit with pepper spray, or subject, uh, subjected to kettling, a tactic which police hemming in and charged protesters. So a couple instances of that happening that we did coverage on was that they would kettle everyone so that they couldn't leave. They would surround them so you couldn't leave the area. They would then wait for curfew to tick down. And then as soon as curfew went into effect, they're like, well, all of you are violating curfew because you can't go anywhere because we stopped you from doing that. So we're going to beat you. That's the New York police in, a, in action. Look at that. Woohoo. Kettling. It's such, a, it's such a passive term. Like, we need a better term. Uh, anyway, that's for another time. Uh, one person's arm was broken. There you go. And it's like, all, remember all those scared poor police? Oh, no, they had, they surrounded me. I didn't know what to do. Oh, my God. That old armed person touched my arm, so I shot him. It was so scary. <laughs> I'm a coward, and that's why I'm a police officer as well, because uh, no one pays better to do that work, kind of work. So to quote Jimmy Dore, uh, it's a lot of people who are beaten up in high school that are police that are also on steroids. They refuse to take drug testing of their own. Oh, it's a wonderful, wonderful position. I mean, if you want to be a criminal, don't go on the streets. Join a gang. The police. <laughs> uh, some protesters <laughs> said they were arrested and jailed without food, water, or medical care in crowded conditions that put them at risk for uh, COVID-19. They also said uh, police failed to wear a mask as required by law. I can say I've almost started a thing um, a while back, wh which was... Uh, spot the only person in a 7-Eleven not wearing a mask, and it's always the police. Always. Always. At least in my numerous appearances or viewings. They also say police fail to wear masks as required by law. So again, that maintains what I just said. The charges that DeBalzio, who publicly defended NYPD's response to the protest, his own daughter, of course, chewed him out for it. That's not in the article. I'm just mentioning it. Maintained the de facto policy of allowing police officers to violently target. Stop resisting. I'm not resisting. I don't care. I'm scared. That's, I mean, that's how you got to save your cop. I'm scared. Approving forceful deployments and failing to discipline officers for their actions. Is, is that a surprise? In addition to the mayor, Shea, and chief of... Um, Department Ten Ten Tenerance Mohammed, oh, man, I cannot read names. Uh, it's not not good. It's not as bad as police beating people, but it's not good. Uh, they are named as defendants. The mayor of New York and the NYPD's leadership condoned and even prone at the violence. The lawsuit says as the protesters continue. By the way, right, another thing. So the person who's the chief of police that was a part of this, that was leading all of this, 
had just transferred away from Wisconsin where they had paid about $33 million in settlements for him literally doing the same thing that's happening in New York. So, huh, so we basically ex- what he did in Wisconsin, he did in New York. Mm-hmm. All so we can expect, it. I'm sure, a increased fine because, again, uh, I don't think he, he, he hit legal advisors as much in Wisconsin. So there you go. Um, so New York pays out more because they can. But by the way, the way it's set up, that means if you live in New York, you're paying out. Congratulations, you get a prize when that is paying victims of... Yeah, anyway. As the protest continued and, well, and well-documented, indisputable patterns of unlawful uh, use of force emerged. The mayor, the commissioner, and Chief Manhan, I think that's what I'm talking about, deliberately did not take steps to prevent the police from using these tactics again and again. Instead, they repeatedly praised the actions of the NYPD, promoting, authorizing, sanctioning, and incurring further violence. I remember how de Blasio, uh, when, that, when the police hit... Uh, people, uh, de Blasio was like, it happens. They were scared. And as you know, if a cop's scared, they can kill everyone. That's just how it is. And then uh, the police actually surrounded another vehicle. They got scared. They did the same exact thing. And de Blasio was on next day going, you can't do that. You can't do that. As a citizen, you can't hit the police. That only works the other way around. It's a one-way street. And the police make it two-way if they want. So let's continue. It's a fun story. It's all these other stories that we've covered just mashing into one. So de Blasio instituted a curfew in the city for the first time in decades in response to incidents of looting and vandalism in a face of outcry over police officers using force to disperse peaceful protesters, including many of his own former aides and supporters. De Blasio mostly defended the NYPD, maintaining that police force uses a light as a touch as possible um, I mean, of, of from being scared. So I mean, they, I mean, what he's really saying is, we didn't kill him, so shut up. Wow. And so, oh, though he you. acknowledged, I, I would love to see if his daughter got killed. Him, they're like, you know, the police, they did the right thing. I'm on board with this. That my daughter deserved to die. I'm sure he'd have a different response if it was someone connected to him. But oh well, it seems like not because a lot of his supporters got knocked up on this, as they're saying, former aides, former uh, staffers, whatever, doesn't matter. Uh, police is what you need. Uh, though he acknowledged that he had not seen widely circulated videos of cops rushing protesters. Right when it was, whenever they were the, whenever they had the um, press conferences, and someone bring, I haven't seen it. I haven't. I didn't see it. I'm. I'm no longer responsible. I didn't see a video. But the people that the cops said that they did something, I haven't seen. Those people are guilty. De Blasio, vote for mm. me. Though he acknowledged that he hit a right. Um, Someone, and then finally, he's the apologist in chief, Lieberman said. So I felt this was a nice article summarizing everything that we've been seeing in New York over the last six or so months and how de Blasio is, it's, it, I feel like, you know, everything's on camera. You're the person that's doing it, that's leading it, the police chief has record of doing this in other places. You have, I mean, there was so much video, and I can't, I can't begin to think that, like, basically entrapping people into being beaten is quite the legal thing. Because what we learn is that when the police do these things, and by the way, very clever suing the brass and the leadership, because uh, the police would just say, oh, qualified immunity. No one's run over someone with a car in this fashion before, so therefore I'm uh, innocent. So this is, uh, this is an interesting thing. I'm interested to see where it leads. Mm -hmm. I expect, based on all this precedent, we're going to, I don't know, in a year or two, there's going to be some report out that's like the uh, de Blasio owes the city or has has to pay out like $100 million or something of that nature because it's way more people than Wisconsin. People with money, people with better legal representation. The guy has case precedents. I mean, this is not good. So if the least I can say is that if if you got beat up, and you had to, and you lost your arm, you might have some money coming your way because in America, I think that's all we can really offer you. The sad truth is that even if this case gets, uh, gets everything and they mm-hmm. win everything, no cop's going to get fired. Let's, let's also address something else because you, you, you covered the article pretty well. Let's talk about the quick rise and absolute spin, fail, fall of Mayor Bill de Blasio because when he got into office... He, a lot of people, he, he came in there with thunderous applause. A lot of people were really kind of impressed with him. He was somebody different and than the, the way, previous our, mayors. And by the way, to our credit, yeah. we were, we were, eh. 
you know, I mean, but, you know, he had, he had some questionable uh, leadership, questionable policies, but then quickly how things still remain the same. But he's like a sniffing little weasel because he still wants to hold on to the progressive movement or hijack it in a way mm -hmm. because he did get onto the Bernie Sanders bag, bag, you know, bandwagon. Mm -hmm. He got onto a lot of other progressive bandwagons. But at the end of the day, he never followed through with any of his policies. And even though there's so much videos uh, out there uh, on social media about police brutality, police corruption, we're seeing what happened in the city of New York, just using New York City uh, as an example by itself, um, de Blasio did nothing. He remained silent. I thought he was this big progressive champion. I thought you cared about people, de Blasio, but obviously you don't. You want to know who you remind me of? Nobody in real life, you remind me of the weak, sniveling, back, you know, no backbone at all, Jerry Smith from Rick and mm. Morty. <laughs> That's who you remind me of. And I'm very glad that your daughter called you out for your hypocrisy because it's, you know, it takes one of your own to really call you out for, you know, not standing up for anything. The people were demanding real reform and change from a major metropolitan city, and you as mayor said nothing. You kept quiet. You ignored the fact that the police ran over citizens that they're supposed to, in theory, protect. But well, as they, soon as the they're people... They're protecting them. They just yeah. got scared. You know, so and, 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 so, and so Mayor Bill de Blasio, I mean, if you would like to, I don't know, defend yourself or defend all these actions that are being taken against you and your administration, we invite you to be on our show. But because you're a politician and a neoliberal Democrat, because you're not a progressive, you're probably not going to show up. You're probably not going to say anything at all. And, you know, of course, you're going to have the media defend you because, oh, he's the mayor. He has to do this. Know this, that the people of New York City probably had it up to here with you. And there's a good chance you're going to be voted out of office for your incompetence, for your weak leadership. And the very fact that when it came time for you to stand up with the people, you did nothing. Your daughter should be mayor of New York City. There. Yeah, it's like, um, again, it's like, you know, I think I know the response that de Blasio is going to give. I was also scared of, of the protesters, therefore I'm uh, not responsible for my actions. Yeah. Wouldn't that be amazing in America if like, you could just say I'm scared, I felt scared for my life, and you could get away with anything? Oh man, I, 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 did, I, I did take a million scared. dollars from the bank and I did shoot that clerk, but I was scared. He was surrounding me with the booth. Yeah, okay, he, he, here's, here's when you should be scared. When you're in the middle of the ocean and there's a great white shark coming right at you, then, hey, you hey, know, I'm scared. Sh hey, that's not fair. Sharks kill less people a year than the New York Police Department oh, did in the summer. True. That's, that's true. not that's fair true. to sharks. All right. You know what? I More to hippos. I, hold on. Wait. I, I apologize to the shark community out there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the very, I, I take personal offense to that. Sh sharks kill maybe two or three people a year. They think are seals, and we kill 100 million. Seems unfair to be scared of them. It should quite be the other way around. In fact... I think this is a great scenario and a great discussion about this whole story on who should be scared of who. Yeah, true. That we don't get, as humans, we don't just get to say, I'm scared of sharks, and we go and call a couple thousand. Just like the police don't get to say, I'm scared, and then run over a hundred people. Yeah. All right. So And then back over them and then run, because they're super scared. They don't know what the reverser drive is. It's like, I don't know what to do. I'm just pulverizing this guy I didn't like, scaredly. Yeah. And I'm actually going to give the si uh, final word uh, to, to two people in the uh, live stream chat. Silence is violence. Go vegan. Sharks are important to the ecosystem. Cops, yes. no. And E. Heller <laughs> says, we are pro-shark in this chat. You know what? The Everyone, shark community. I, I apologize. But, oh, yeah, kid, but, wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Wait. Can, 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 apologize. Can, I apologize, shark community. And hold on. Can we get the camera on me? Because this is for de Blasio. Right here, buddy. <laughs> Right here. Kit, don't do that. He'll be, he's scared of you now. Okay, okay, whatever. He might shoot at you. All right. 